back in 2015, Greg Monroe was one of the best big men in the game. At just 24 years of age, he was a top 10 rebounder in the league. He had a solid offensive touch scoring 15.9 points per game, which at the time was a result that ranked in the top 20 scoring big men. For the whole 2014-15 season, Greg Monroe averaged 15.9 points, 10.2 rebounds and 2.1 assists. Solid numbers. That was his last season in Detroit. Since then, over almost 5 years he's played in just 254 games, has been a part of 5 teams and during last year alone played for 3 teams. This season, he's not even on an NBA team. So how come that once such a productive big guy still at just 29 years old suddenly can't find a job in the NBA? Hey guys, for people to have a better chance of finding me, I've decided to rebrand this channel a bit. You still should be able to find me by typing in the previous channel name, but this new one should be more SEO friendly. So for the first time, hello guys, this is Purple Prince and today I'm getting into Greg Monroe's career and we'll try to find out what has happened to it and where is he now. The first warning sign Greg Monroe got in Detroit was in 2012, when the Pistons drafted another center Andre Drummond with the 9th pick. For the 2012-2013 season, the Pistons managed the situation by letting Andre Drummond come off the bench. But when they realized how productive Drummond can be with starters minutes, they had to do something. And they did. The Pistons moved Monroe to the starting power forward spot and inserted Drummond as the starting center. The move proved to be a good one, since in the first year as the starting center, Drummond was the league leading offensive rebounder and second in rebounds per game. And while Greg Monroe's stats didn't suffer as well, both of them clogged the paint. There were spacing problems and it was clear that the system of two big guys who can't shoot outside the paint just can't work for a long period of time. Greg Monroe had his best season as a Piston in 2014-15 and he was playing at the power forward spot, but his contract was up at the end of the season. The problem in Detroit was even deeper though. There was another guy making up for the third part of Detroit's front court and that was Josh Smith, who was athletic but also wasn't really a guy who can knock down the threes. What Detroit got was at one point a total of 23.5% success rate from deep by their front court. They were minus 7.1 points per 100 possessions with all three on the court. Adding to the situation was the fact that other big men in the league, especially fours, were stretching the floor, shooting threes. Nobody in Detroit was doing that and Monroe wanted a max deal. So his future in Detroit was pretty much over. In the summer of 2015, Monroe signed a 3 year $50 million contract with the Milwaukee Bucks. He was back playing at center spot and had good results. But the Bucks as a team didn't. So then head coach Jason Kidd tinkered with the starting lineup and for a month Greg Monroe was coming off the bench. He had a good season individually, but it was clear that he isn't the future and his game style just doesn't fit today's NBA. Bucks also had young talents in Giannis Antetokounmpo and Jabari Parker, so for the 2016-17 season, Monroe was permanently moved to a bench role. Monroe wasn't a good defender, he was slow and he couldn't shoot from the outside, that was a recipe for a disaster, so at the beginning of the 2017-18 season, Monroe was traded to the Phoenix Suns. At the time, a lot of media outlets said that the Phoenix Suns just picked up one of the best backup big men in the league. He ended up playing just 20 games for the Suns though. His contract was bought out on January 31st, 2018. About a week later, Greg Monroe signed with the Boston Celtics. Like before, it was seen as a great move. Monroe could rebound and score in the post, which were the two biggest weaknesses of that Celtics team. He came into Boston looking out of shape, his defense was as horrendous as ever and offensively he struggled. A month into his tenure with the Celtics he was shooting 26% on his post ups, which was pretty much the worst in the league. And you can't play small with him since he's not quick enough and can't shoot. Monroe did write his name in the Celtics records books though, as on April 6, 2018, he recorded a triple-double, becoming the first Celtics center since Robert Paris in 1987 to do so. Monroe finished the season with Boston, not really having any meaningful impact in the playoffs, so at the end of the season, he was looking for a job again. 
In the summer of 2018, Monroe signed with the Toronto Raptors, but that stint ended mid-season when he was traded to the Brooklyn Nets, who waived him right after. By the end of March, he got a second opportunity with the Celtics when he signed a 10-day contract, but that expired and the Celtics didn't sign him for the season. And by the end of 2019, he had a three-game stint with the Philadelphia 76ers. That's it. This season, he's not in the NBA. This summer, he signed with Bayern Munich of the German Basketball Bundesliga and EuroLeague. For his new team, he's averaging 12.4 points and 6.6 rebounds in 24.3 minutes of action. In an interview to Eurohoops, Greg Monroe opened up a bit about how he came to Germany and what is his status with the NBA. After a while trying to explore options back in the NBA, it became pretty clear that I had to try and find something here. And first, clearly, I wanted to be in the EuroLeague. It was the best league you can probably find outside of the NBA. The competition has definitely lived up to that. Playing against these teams and those players, I kind of came in late to Bayern Munich. The team was the best situation for me. Just coming into a team where I think my skill set would help. When asked about how he felt not getting any offers from the NBA, he responded. You feel like you put yourself in a position to stay on the team, but it's just not how it went. That's how basketball is around the world. This is how it's in basketball leagues everywhere. Obviously you try and you try to stay in the NBA, but when the opportunity doesn't present itself, you find other destinations. I'm happy to be here in the EuroLeague. It's been very competitive. It's more than 450 players in the NBA and there are more than 450 great players in the world. I feel like here I'm competing against other great players still. Guys that I competed against before. New players that I hadn't competed against before but are still great players. So the competition has been up to par with what I believe. It's been fun. For his NBA career, Greg Monroe has played in 632 games and holds averages of 13.2 points, 8.3 rebounds and 2.1 assists. His play style might not fit the NBA anymore. His defense was never there. The most he can hope for is probably like being the 8th man in some team's rotation and being that 4th big to rest some starters and key bench players. Whether he ever comes back to the NBA remains to be seen, but for now, it seems like he's happy where he is in Europe. Thanks for watching the video guys. Do you think Greg Monroe can come back to the NBA? Will some team want him on their roster? Please leave a comment below with the answer to the question and also tell me why do you think he's out of the NBA. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This was Purple Prince and I'm out.